The PPC has been helping vulnerable communities to adapt to the impacts of climate vulnerability and climate change by helping them undertake activities such as horticulture, aquaculture, and livestock management while taking into consideration identified climate risks and impacts. The project also addresses challenges faced by smallholder farmers such as low productivity, and it does so through diversification development of the agriculture value chain, linkage to communities, to markets, to enable themselves their produce, as well as development of climate resilient infrastructure. We are implementing this pilot program for climate resilience, which has main objectives, such as building adaptation capacity, amongst the local people who have been affected by climate change effects. We're also helping them through various projects that are being funded by giving them small grants upon development of a project that they feel they can manage and run in order to help them become resilient. The Government of the Republic of Zambia has implemented the World Bank Group-supported pilot program for climate resilience. The PPCR is aimed at strengthening Zambia's international framework for climate resilience while improving the adaptive capacity of vulnerable communities in the Barotse and Kafue sub-basins. The PPCR is coordinated by the National Project Coordinating Unit under the Ministry of National Development Planning. There are two flagship projects being implemented under the PPCR, namely the Strengthening Climate Resilience in the Kafue sub-basin and the strengthening climate resilience in the Barotse subplain, Scrabs. The Scrabs project consists of 17 districts and 25 wards. His Excellency, the President, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, visited the Scrabs projects in Western Province from the 10th to 13th July 2020. The President wanted to familiarize himself with the projects and also to interact with the project beneficiary communities. Through this project, Communities are being supported to build resilience by diversifying livelihoods to include income generation activities that are not heavily affected by weather and climate change. Thus, non-farm activities such as craft making, mushroom growing, and honey production are being promoted. Further, Communities are being supported with market linkages for effective procurement for inputs and access to markets for their products. My coming here is to see how these projects have evolved and listen to success stories and indeed any challenges that beneficiaries are experiencing. Through this project we have made great strides in uplifting the lives of vulnerable communities in the Barossa sub basin by way of supporting interventions to increase food security, thereby increasing disposable income at the household level. We are the government of the government. We are the government of the government. Luka itusa kwa tenenge kwa bususo, nilusina neba bususo. Kono kifaza alutusa. Kao fela kizenga atazeza ala mwaka beji mwale mwale fumana. Ni matenti nilusina mwakweza chwa ni mwakuloba. Nilulobala langa fela wana chwalo minanginge luluma. Kono kifaza alutusoli walobala mwale tente. Kao fela ki government ye lufile. Lwa itume la kao fela zona zeo. Una muma shangombo. Kilame Stienji Iru Tusize Kwa kale Iniru Nirufu mana angalita Piesi mwa mwa nete mo Nete yalu na ea kwa anduriva 
kwa kuri kona mune rufumana ngari tapi kwa lekisa kwa sakwa town eh tswale fa itire eh ppcr ka pa project ye ya mafishi pondi lukupire ku kuweza apply rwa mubaru wa muhezi then aruli fa eh project ye mwendi kalire paruli ve zifera kuri mezi akene matene ni litapi ku tobe ya matene litapi kuri kwa pata eh Kone ku kufumana tuso yemu kuri kone ku ipisa pate ni mani community kau fela kone ku fumana tuso pate ni pa projecti ya ba PPC ya ba itumela huru kwa muso kuri ba projecti ya kone ku zara piri mani tuaro. The other notable successes have been the provision of drinking water for household consumption and the construction of water harvesting structures in several communities to support off-season agriculture, which is important for the resilience building, agriculture, aquaculture, and livestock management activities. And to Pangela Damu, Yavisi, Mulaka, Vingombe, Chohan, Vingombe, we are Tuku, we are under, Vinuamema, Pangu Pangama Garden, to Panga, to Pangamu Loho, Kutu ya ndanawa mbelela, tunaitumele lako viva na tupangela. Chozo lopili, imeja. Ndi tuaitumele lako. Faa ye kinako ya kutula lopili. Ni always expect to be able to get 2,500 kg, come 3,000. I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a Luka lubata kuikoloti sanga ni mahali magurupu. Kuli, waifatu loni, yu wabele kisa kwa tini wafu manaka profitu waku tisamariale kwa, kwa gurupu. Ni kona melelo ya luna, ni hupolo ya luna. Ni faa, anuvulela, ike luba ni nizivo, mwari tapi. Eni, ike luba ni nizivo, mwari kutali tapi. Ni ilu itutele zengata, lubona kuli mwari kutali tapi, kuhinzi hande. Kakuli wako na ukutula havili kasirimu. Ni alu kutula havili kasirimu. Habona kuli watu, habana kunyanda hulu. Fish resources in our rivers are diminishing due to climate change impacts coupled with overfishing practices. The community is human is in the process of establishing a cold storage facility with government support to enable it supply the whole district with fish and eventually to supply the whole produce. Uh, the cold storage facility for fish. Uh, as you can see, uh, some men are working, the contractors are on the site, they are doing the plastering so that the project is scheduled and completed within three weeks so that it can be handed over to the farmers. The structure, the cold storage facility, is a climate smart uh, project. It's a solar powered, which is going to be run on solar. Uh, unlike uh, these other energy uh, cold rooms, where we've experienced a lot of uh, losses. We've taken some fish in Senanga in a cold room that are powered by grid. So at certain times the power might go and the, the fish get spoiled. But for, for the solar powered cold room, the fish will be guaranteed good temperature for preservation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, being cognizant of the importance of the better sector, the livelihoods of our people in Western province, my government through this project has committed to enhance the agricultural value chain by placing emphasis on citizens' participation in agribusiness and Western province has been a beneficiary of rice value chain, among others, 
And this intervention has led to increased income and food security. Sogam is a, a drought tolerant crop, which will give us a, a chance at least uh, to produce enough for our consumption and uh, for income generating. Uh, with the, our banking center, uh, it started uh, due to the challenge of the mail production, and then the government came in to assist us with the funds to, uh, to build this uh, structure where we will be bulking our products uh, so that we can sell in the bulk. And then uh, we didn't have the funds to start our project. The government also assisted us with the initial capital. We had about the 200 by 10 kg seed, which we gave um, each farmer a 10 kg, expecting each farmer to grow about the, a hectare. And then uh, farmers have uh, produced. We have now started the recovering. Some of the recovered uh, inputs are already there in the, in, the, in the other shed which we bought from FRA because our shed is not yet complete. And then we expect to recover about 200 by 50 kg because we are recovering 50 kg per 10 kg which we gave out. And this we are going to, to sell and sustain our project in the long run. Very proud that His Excellency the President, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, came in the province to issue checks worth him, you know, 18.5 million. That's not a small amount. Now imagine how people's livelihood among the beneficiaries is going to change and the effects through the entire province. It shows how government is committed on elevating the poverty of the people. Because when you look at Western Province, there's so much what government is doing. And among them, which is the same PP center that we're talking about. And most of our women have gone into fish farming. Most of our women are rearing goats. Most of our women have got pigs. Most of, those, most of the time we used to think they can only do vegetables and so on. But look, this government has decided to like, you know, gender sensitivity. We are giving our women to ensure that they are self-sustaining. I'm standing here proudly and ready for the challenge that comes with a new project because this is a new project. It has never happened in Western Province. Today we received this uh, check from PPCR. After um, application being submitted to PPCR uh, Mongo, and this is for the project for the organization called Youth Activist Organization. We are trying to be able to put up uh, a pork processing plant, in short, more like a pig abbot or so to say. And uh, this investment package will see us having the actual infrastructure, the abbot itself, will see us having the borehole at the same facility, will also see us having the cold room, will also see us having machinery within that abattoir for processing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware that the identification of this project have been with full participation of people through the national government planning process involving district government coordinating committees, provincial government coordinating committees, and the national government coordinating committees. Climate change is multidimensional. Uh, it's cross-cutting, it affects various uh, sectors of the, of the economy. It also is an environmental issue, on the other hand, it also impinges on the social economic, uh, I mean, the social development of the country. And therefore, it's important that all the sectors, the environmental sector, the social and economic, are represented. And then the other also important thing is that as we implement climate change projects, we need to be mindful of how various interventions are impacting or reinforcing each other. And from that perspective, ministers meet every quarter 
to discuss and review projects that are being implemented. But most important also, they need to be brought on board on how the projects are selected. I think the projects are selected on the basis of the data that is provided through Central Statistics Office to basically um, help us assess which areas of the economy are being affected and where the impacts are ravaging more than the others.